Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to center this video around uh, a pretty important message to those of you who are struggling with low self-esteem. Maybe self-esteem is an issue that you've always struggled with. Maybe you have recently come through a period of maybe professional or personal turmoil in your life that has taken away what used to be what you would consider a high level of self-esteem and self-confidence, and now you're on the rocks. I know that a lot of the advice that I put out there, um, it, it requires stepping out of your comfort zone. And it would require even someone who has a high degree of self-esteem, let's say, uh, it would still require them to challenge themselves. But if you're dealing with this particular issue, it must seem impossible at times, you know? It, it must be akin to saying, yes, of course, I would love to do that. I would love to, to be able to enter into dialogue with the CEO of a company and passionately present myself. I would love to make some moves on the career development side or get a mentor, but I just can't even get out of bed in the morning. It's a struggle for me even to put my clothes on and um, go to work. And by the time I've just fulfilled, you know, the hundred different actions of survival, I have nothing left over in the tank to keep moving, you know? Um, it may surprise you to know, uh, and, and I want to share a couple of concrete um, insights I've had that have helped me, but it really may surprise you to know that um, I am not someone, I was, <laughs> was not born out of the womb with um, high degrees of self-confidence and self-esteem at all. Um, I grew up with uh, a parent who struggled with mental illness um, and a family dynamic that largely didn't have any support structures or communication structures, you know, so I retreated into myself, you know, I uh, lived basically in my room with my music and... Um, uh, my books, the library was like a, an absolute oasis for me uh, within my neighborhood. I didn't really have much in the way of friends. And that was my life, you know. And so when you grow up like that um, and now you become an adult and you're forced to advocate for yourself and you're forced to enter into situations where you're supposed to say, hey, yeah, absolutely, I can do this. I have a vision here. There's something that I can do and, and I can meet anyone. That's incredibly daunting. You know, it used to take me upwards of 45 minutes to an hour to make a, a simple phone call to take care of anything, let alone a job interview. I'd be panicking about it for days before, you know, so I, I do know what that is like. And the first piece of advice I can tell you that anyone who says any guru, any book, any expert out there who thinks that you can mindset and mentally get your way out of this problem is dead wrong. In my experience, trying to fight the mental game of self-esteem with another mental game does not work because our minds do not respond well to forcing belief. You got to where you are today and you're struggling with it because rightfully or wrongfully, you went through certain experiences or you came up a certain way and your mind came to certain conclusions. Some of the symptoms of that are this low self-esteem. But for you to go in and try to be naively enough to say, you know, I'm going to think my way out of this, in my experience, that doesn't work. What tends to work really well instead of that is exploiting the action-mind connection that we all have. You know, I'm sure you've seen these studies that say, hey, you know, if you just smile like this, you know, I feel like, it, like a moron basically doing this. But honestly, the truth is, if I do this for like two minutes, my actual state of mind will increase a little bit, you know, because our minds and our bodies are in intimately connected. You know, they're getting information from each other at light speed throughout the course of your life. And so when you do that, you are essentially hacking into that and forcing a change. Same thing I would say applies to self-esteem and addressing the issue of self-esteem and slowly building on that. Don't try to outthink it. Don't try to outbelieve it. Let the actions that you take, which are infinitely easier to do than changing your mindset, let the actions come first and then let your mind see the effects of those different actions and your mind will take care of the self-esteem problem. Your mind will take care of the self-confidence problem. And I don't mean to be naive about it. I'm not here to tell you that you go on some kind of crazy regimen of bold action, your entire mindset is going to change tomorrow. It won't. It won't. You know, I was um, uh, 20 years old. 
uh, you know, I was a film and TV actor at the time, and I was auditioning for this huge uh, agency that could have changed my career, and I got in, but the first critique they had was work on your self-confidence. How can you do that, right? And it, it comes in bits and pieces. It comes in being bold in small bits and pieces and working your way up from there. But let the action change the belief. Don't try to change the belief directly. That's my first and most important thing that I want to share with you here. The other thing, okay, a couple of, of key things that you can do because before we get into the skills, you know, before we get into the advice, let's just come to a secret agreement here between me and you, okay? Can we agree that even though you are struggling with self-esteem, even though you feel not all the way there and capable of doing it, even though you are struggling with your own personal demons, can we agree that that should not be a reason why people who are a tenth of qualified as you, a tenth as passionate as you, and a tenth as capable as you should get ahead. Do they deserve to get ahead simply because they are not struggling with what you're struggling with? Do they deserve it? And if you say that they do not, then let us come to an agreement here that one way or the other, whether we fall flat on our face, we are getting to the other side. We are advocating for ourselves regardless of whether it makes us feel uncomfortable. That's the second thing, is, is, is coming to an understanding that, yeah, you know, uh, this might be deeply uncomfortable. I might deeply feel out of my comfort zone, but I know on, uh, if I don't do it, if I don't show up, then they win by default. And I'm not willing to lose the game by default. If I'm going to lose the game, I'm going to lose it playing on the field. And the irony is, the people who show up to play the game on the field are the ones who win it, right? So, it's another thing to really keep in mind. Now, here, here are some strategies that I have learned over the years that have helped me when I'm in a situation that calls for high self-esteem or, you know, or high self-confidence and I don't have it, right? Um, number one, um, reframe what you're doing. Let me give you an example. Um, I faced a lot of limitations when I was starting my business because when I looked at the growth path and where I wanted to go, it was always about me. It was, what could I do? What could I as a niche for myself, for my career do? And when I had a family and um, I saw them and, and I saw that I had a unit, that shifted. And what happened was I said, it's not about me. I'm doing it for them. So if I'm advocating, I'm advocating for my children. If I am showing up and building something new that'll help us in the long term, I'm doing it for my wife and my kids. I'm doing it for them. I serve them. And reframing the, that, everything that I was doing professionally, along the eyes of, I am their champion. I'm not doing it for myself. For me, that blew the doors wide open. Because there were times where I was in high stakes negotiations and, and trying to strike deals and dealing with calamities and crises on the business front. My hands were shaking. I was shaking. But I was, do, I was showing up every single day. I was showing up ready to do what I was going to do because I was not going to look at you know, the eyes of my children and my wife and, and, and know that I had let them down and know that I had fallen short. I was not willing to accept that. So reframing what you're doing can be a great way to get past a obstacle that you keep running into on the self-esteem front, you know? If you keep coming across like, I just, you know, um, I don't deserve this, I don't deserve it, maybe reframe what you're doing from a period where it's not about whether or not you deserve it. Maybe it's about what you need to do, what you should do, what is noble for you to do. That can really, really shift things. So reframe the problem instead of continuously getting stuck with the same one can really, really help. Um, here's the other one. Prepare in the most practical sense for the worst case scenario. This is something that I learned when I was studying uh, some of the basics of uh, stoicism. And uh, this is a, a, a key tenant there, is to remove fear, to remove the aspects that are gonna inflame your lack of self-esteem and, and make that more of an issue, come into every situation absolutely knowing what the worst case scenario will be. If you have a high stakes job situation, you, I want you to come into that interview having made absolute peace with the fact that this will not go forward. This will not go forward. There is no hope to be found here. There is no, no anxiety to build yourself on. I know and I have prepared and I have structured my life and I can walk out of that room with things not having worked out knowing in my gut 
that I've prepared for it and I know it. It's not a shock for me. That has helped me a lot because what happens is it gives you a degree of clarity. When you're looking at it from that point of view, it's like entering into a deal to, to buy a car. The worst thing you can do is fall in love with the car and say, "There's, I, I, I'm not leaving without the car, right? That's the worst place to be. If you go in saying, yeah, you know, no matter what I feel about this car, uh, it's one of like 500,000. Uh, I can go anywhere and get it. By the way, that's good advice for all of you car maniacs out there. Just remember that, you know, it's a commodity. Um, <laughs> So when you're, when you're, if you can go into every situation having absolutely prepared and come in for that, then you can go into it with a greater degree of freedom. It's not the same. The opposite seems like it would be true. It is not. Um, if you go into it with, with like this crazy amount of stress and hopes pinned to it, it's only going to exacerbate, in my opinion, uh, the self-esteem issues that you're coping with. Um, number three, blatantly bribe yourself. Now is not the time to get hung up on those types of things, okay? Use whatever tools you can. What I do, if I'm going into something that's really important uh, and I feel, you know, that... You know, I would do it no matter what, but especially if I'm going in there and uh, I know that my self-esteem is going to be challenged, at the end, I want to reward myself with something immediately afterwards. You know, you, um, I like mountain biking, I'll, I'll go mountain biking. I'll buy something for myself. I'll buy something expensive for myself if I can afford it. You know, I will blatantly do something super kind and awesome to myself to get the juices flowing of excitement and turn the anxiety that I might feel in the situation to excitement and, and, and anticipation because I'm getting something good for myself no matter what. I'm treating myself to the candy no matter what. No matter what you do, no matter how this goes, I'm getting that. And just like when we were children, you know, there's something that deeply powerful that that, that taps into that. Um, and, and finally, if all else fails, get angry. And I know that sounds ridiculous, right? But um, there is some truth to that, you know, where if you can say, you know, um, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, this is enough. Like, I'm not I'm not accepting this as the plateau of my life anymore. And you just f spend a little bit of time focusing on every single thing that does not work that brought you to this point. Focusing on the why behind this. Getting away from ego and going right down to what you must accomplish. To what you will not stand for. And you get yourself fired up and angry. In my opinion, not everyone would agree with this. Nothing cuts through the BS like that. Nothing makes you show up, even if your hands are shaky, even if your voice is shaky. It does not matter because if you show up with conviction for the right reasons, you are going to win this. And as people start looking at you differently, as they start seeing the effects of you showing up, your mind is going to get a powerful signal. And maybe it'll take you years to get there. I promise you the journey will be worth it because over time, all the old demons that you thought were insurmountable, all the challenges that you may be facing right now that have ripped the guts out of your belief in your sense of self, your mind will repair it. It has the power to repair it for you if you will take the actions. The actions will feed your mind. The actions will feed the positive belief. But take the actions. Fall flat on your face. Embarrass yourself. Do it over and over and over and over again. Lose your fear of that. Expect the worst. Blatantly bribe yourself. Do what you need to do. And above all, if you keep coming across that same limitation, reframe the problem. We have that capacity within ourselves to reinvent ourselves and the situation depending on how we view it. So view it differently. I know you can do this. If you're watching this, you can do this and you can get beyond it. And I'm pulling for you every step of the way. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you soon.